Okay, so welcome to part two of this video. So, uh, what we're saying now is we have these this uncountable, uncountably infinite subset of B A B here, uh, which is the subset C. And now what we're saying, I don't know what I was doing there. Uh, we'll say now uh, put open balls ball, um, and let's say f little c, um, f little c uh, of radius a half around all f little c which is in this big set c so uh, we could say for all little c is an element of a b so we let little c vary over a b and then we get all of these all of these possible functions here so if we put open balls around all of these then basically the first thing to note is that no point can be in more than one of these balls so if we have uh, let um, x be an element of the ball around f little c of a half and it cannot that implies that x is not an element of the ball around let's say f of little d of size a half the reason being that if c, little c is different from little d uh, then the distance between the f of little uh, f little c and f little d is going to be equal to 1 so the distance between little fc and little fd is equal to 1 we agreed that in the previous video because this forms a discrete metric space uh, so remember um, that the distance between them can only take on values of 0 and 1 uh, okay so they're not equal to one another so they the distance is 1 however uh, if x were an element of both of them, then uh, by the tri we could apply the triangle inequality and say that uh, the distance between fc and fd is less than or equal to the distance between fc. Basically, what we're doing in pictures is we're saying we've got these two, two points. Here's fc and here's fd. We have got um, a ball of radius a half there and another ball of radius a half there. And we're saying that the point x cannot be in both of these. So suppose it was in both of these uh, somehow. Uh, I can't really draw it being in both of these since they don't intersect. But what we're saying is that um, the distance between fc and fd, which is this distance here, has to be less than or equal to the distance. So this is uh, between fc and little x, which is um, this distance here. So if I get the colored pens out. So this distance, distance between f little c and f little d, is this distance here. Uh, the distance between f little c and x is this distance here. So I should label that point x. Okay, damn it. Um, so that's little point x. And the distance plus the other part of the triangle inequality, the distance between little x and f of little d, uh, which is, um, uh, let me get the other pen, this point here this line here. Okay, uh, but because these x is in both of these um, both of these balls, but if we were assuming that this was this wasn't true, then it could be in both of these open balls, and then that would imply that these two things were less than, strictly less than a half. So you'd then get uh, that this sum was less than one, and um, that would be um, that would imply that the distance between F C and FD was less than 1. So it basically you cannot have a point that's in both of these balls. But these ball, these open balls do not intersect. Uh, the reason being that, um, that the distance between all of these points in here is equal to a 1, is equal to 1. So the can, any point that's in one of these open balls can be in no none of the other open balls um, around any of the other points. So if we consider this set of open balls around f little c of radius a half uh, where c can vary over any element of the real numbers or any element of the interval a b then that is a, all of these sets are disjoint basically disjoint and there are uncountably infinitely many of them because there is one for every real number in this interval and there's uncountably many real numbers in that interval so this is uncountably infinitely many of these sets uncountably infinite uncountable I'll just put okay so if uh, if we go back to what we were trying to disprove we had said that there was some s um, the war we were assuming that there was some s which was countable and was dense now if it were dense then there would have to be a point of uh, an element of the set s in each one of these balls uh, so 
uh, let's write that down. If S were dense, were dense in X in the metric space X D, then there would exist an element. There would exist an element from it in each of these open bores. Element from it in each of these open bores. I should be writing this in maths lingo rather than um, English. In each of these open bores. How would I do that in uh, math lingo? Um, the if s were dense, I don't know how you write that, um, there would exist, that would imply there exists a little s which is an element of big S uh, such that little s is an element of the open ball around fc of a half and you'd have to have a little s specific to c and this would have to be true for all uh, c is an element of ab so you'd have to be able to find an, an s little c which depends on little c i'll put you know, i'll put it as a strict dependence so it's a function of little c um, which is an element of that but all of these little s's must be disjoint so all, all of these little s's because little s of c because so i'll put the because little s of c is an element of the open ball around f of c of radius a half it means it cannot be in any of the other open balls because these open balls are disjoint uh, so that must imply that the number implies the number of uh, s little c's is in bijection uh, there's basically one s for every uh, C is an element of AB, which implies that there's uncountably many little s's, which implies that this set big S cannot be countable, and that's a contradiction. So basically, if you assume that uh, this subset is dense, then it implies it cannot be countable, basically, because of the existence of this set big C, uh, which is an uncountable set, which has a discrete metric space structure on it. Uh, so that's the proof that the uh, metric space BAB with the usual uh, supremum metric uh, is not a separable metric space. And the next video we'll move back on to something less esoteric. We'll go on to Cauchy sequences.